Hey, this is uh, kind of fun. There is a complete blues scale right in the first, the three fat strings and the first three frets. There's a full E blues scale in there. And it's, it's some of the heaviest, biggest, loudest, most common notes on guitar. So maybe let's just restrict ourselves to a little corner and consider this uh, little set of notes. This is an E blues scale. And let me just say why that's important. In guitar-based music, E is one of the most common keys, probably because of the open E strings. Um, and when you bring your pick down and hit the first string that hits, that's in proximity of your downstroke, it's gonna be the low E, plus it's the lowest note. So pay attention to uh, anything in the key of E and it's actually one of the easiest keys to play in. Just wanted to kind of clear that up. So I'm going to do the E blues scale, which you probably know is E, G, E, G, E. I'm going to go E, G, A. Let's back that up. A, G, E. So 0, 3, open. Open 3, 0. Very easy. Well, we're going to get to the other notes, but let me just say something about that G. You can kind of spin it just a little bit, a little, just a slight rotation. It just sort of makes it sound a little more mean. But if you bend it really far, it sounds kind of ridiculous. That's no good. We just want a small, just dis disturb that string slightly. All right, let's add one more note. It's B flat. I'm going to go E, G, A, B flat. B flat is the flatted fifth, the Diablo in Musica. It is a very dissonant note. That's first fret, fifth string, B flat, the flatted fifth. That's what makes it a blues scale. It's also called a blue note. Give it a little shake. You can hammer on and pull off. I love it. All right, if that's a flatted fifth, a B flat, that must mean B is the fifth. Yeah, the fifth note in an E major scale is B. Cool, man, we're almost all the way through the scale. So we got E, G, A, B flat, B. I'm going to tell you what we're not going to play. We're not going to play C. And we don't want D flat. So leave those out for now. We're going to add the fourth string open D. Which happens to be the flatted 7. When we say E7, it's because we add a D note to an E chord. And that's what makes it a dominant seventh. So that note, I, enjoy, I let that note ring for a reason. I wanted, it kind of creates some tension, just like that flatted fifth makes some tension. It kind of wants to resolve. So that D is probably pushing to resolve to the E fourth string second fret E. That sounds resolved and uh, kind of like a complete phrase. So it sounds cool to resolve on the root, of course. And that's a good habit to get into. Just let that root ring out and maybe make some space and wait Maybe listen. I always say we're listening for maybe the keyboard or 
the vocal or a harmonica or some other instrument leave some space uh, okay so space is an element that we definitely want to use so okay so some riffs here's using uh, some of these notes of course there's like I call that Johnny Cash style <laughs> boom 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 E B E B or I call this the rock beat. You've seen me do this in videos before. I'm going to play E, E, G, E, repeat. Just some kind of uh, brain dead uh, boogie right there. All right, you can also do E, B, G, B, kind of get a pipeline riff. E, B, G, B. Those are some riffs I teach my uh, students when they're just kind of getting, looking for something to practice, you know. So, um, you could, I'm going to play uh, a little bit of an Aerosmith song. Cool, man. E, E. G B D D B D B G E E E E I love that riff. Um, so yeah, man, when I was my neighbor, when I was about 16 or 15, he came over with a stack of uh albums and Aeros he had a bunch of Aerosmith albums he's like here man I don't listen to this stuff anymore <laughs> I'm like what there's a lot of albums man so I started listening and like Aerosmith cool I liked it so another one uh off of Aerosmith's debut debut album was uh their cover of Walking the Dog which is like Something like that. Some sort of a boogie. I should work that one up again. That, that's pretty fun. So it's kind of a gold mine of riffs. You could do like... Uh, kind of like Voodoo Child. Um, that's kind of a hot lick. Like a E D B A G. E D. B, A, G. Those are pull-offs. I probably learned that off of a Ted Nugent double live gonzo or something. <laughs> uh, maybe Great White Buffalo or something. Anyway, it's a gold mine of notes. So, plus, you know, you got the lowest note on your guitar, and that oh, the, you got three open strings. It's like that's pretty easy. <laughs> and then all you gotta do is just add this E, B, and G. Get that B flat for the evil, evil note. I even wrote it. Excuse me. I wrote a couple songs. Uh, uh, I call that one Space Ape. And also uh, The Meat Grinder. How's that one go? I can't remember. Um, I got a few using that riff. Uh, one goes... <laughs> It adds like a C and an F in there. That one's called the Reverb Shake. Yeah, I I love that little scale. So, um, and of course we can work it all the way up the neck, but sometimes just restricting yourself in one little corner of the guitar is uh, will yield you more results than spreading it out too thin. But of course we want to play the whole neck, and we'll do that. 
soon, I'm sure. So, yeah, man, if you need any uh, anything written out, let me know. But mainly, I'm just going to say the video is going to speak for itself. So, if you got a chance, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, leave a comment. Uh, I appreciate the thumbs up and um, happy 4th of July. Don't blow your fingers off.